Hey, what's going on everybody? It is your favorite self-proclaimed master here, aka Timalek, and today I am bringing you guys another short story. If you're unfamiliar with this series, I do a stream once a week where I write a short story live with help from the audience. If you want to be a part of next week's short story, head on over to www.twitch.tv slash Timalek and hit that follow button. You'll get an email notification whenever I go live, but without further ado, here is a fairy tale called Marco the Phoenix. Enjoy. You always were one for extravagance, Lord Callum. Brian let out a boisterous laugh at the commander's sudden realization. He'd worked with Commander Emmy since he was just a boy and reckoned the commander of the King's army would have grown used to his lifestyle by now. I surround myself with the luxuries of the gods. Maybe one day I'll become one. You should know my philosophy by now, Lord Commander. And you should know better than to call me Lord Commander in private, Brian. The King's guard is nowhere near. Let's drop the pleasantries. Brian let his eyes drift to the red and black phoenix intricately painted on Commander Emmy's steel chest plate. Though they were just two friends meeting for midday drinks, the Lord Commander had an image and a reputation to uphold. He was never seen outside of a suit of brilliant armor adorned with the fiery sigil of the House Harris. Though the armor and the sword of Commander Emmy were far too extravagant for the use of a normal soldier, they did not look out of place in the office of Brian Callum, the king's assassin. The table they sat at was carved from a single piece of ebony, black as midnight and shipped from across the great sea. The walls hung with tapestries that depicted tales told all over the kingdom, from the time Sir Robert Jacobs defeated the Vampire of the East to the time the widow Loras influenced the tides with her tears. The assassin's office appeared to be the inside of one giant storybook, and the two characters sitting within had plenty of stories of their own. Untold and taken to their graves, these were two of the most feared men in the whole kingdom. But perhaps the most brilliant decoration of the entire office was the beast perched in the corner. It was the stuff of legends, a myth to most, a silly child's tale to others. A bird of prey with feathers like fire, red and orange. It had the horns of a deer which were gilded with gold, and it sat quietly watching the two men as they conversed. It had been the product of a great forest fire which nearly decimated the kingdom. When the flames had subsided, all the local animals were either driven to the kingdom's furthest reaches or killed by the flames, all except a single bird, Marco the Phoenix. Little was known about Marco, but the king's assassin, Brian Callum, had taken the bird into his home after having explored the scorched countryside looking for survivors. Nobody else had paid the thing much attention, thinking it was a lucky robin or some sort of a sparrow, but as it grew older it became much clearer that Marco was a special bird indeed. Brian Callum had taken the thing on all of his missions. A bird of prey should relate to his work after all, and the two grew a companionship which was not understood by many, but Marco had become a pivotal part of the man's operations. I must admit, Brian, this is not a visit of merely pleasure. The king has another mission for you. Brian Callum let the grin melt away from his face, taking another drink of wine and letting the ringing of his silver chalice fill the room. He held a chainmail covered arm out to his side and Marco took flight, flying across the blood red carpet in the assassin's office and taking hold of Brian's arm with its talons. Commander Emmy produced a scroll from within his cloak and handed it to Brian. It was sealed with the royal seal, and Brian held Commander Emmy's eye contact for a long while. Though Brian still held the office and the title of being the king's assassin, it had been years since he'd actually killed anybody. In his youth, the man was perhaps the most deadly in the entire city, which spoke volumes about his abilities, but now that he'd grown old and gray, he wished to do that work no longer. He held the scroll between his thumb and forefinger, staring into the soul of the Lord Commander. His eyes narrowed and wiped the wine from his lips before tearing open the parchment. An elven merchant, he said. Why would our king be troubled by a merchant? It's not my place to know, Lord Callum, nor is it yours. I don't like this either, but it's the decree of the throne. Accept or deny, the choice is yours. Choice, Brian said with a laugh. The choice between taking a man's life or losing my own is hardly a choice, is it? The Lord Commander raised his shoulders and let them fall again before standing from the table and drinking the last bit of his wine. There's always a choice, Brian. Make yours wisely. Brian stared at the man until he'd left his office, then taking his gaze back to the parchment with disdain on his face. He stared at the words a long while, wondering if the king really had any use for another dead merchant, or if he was sending Brian to a sure death. Though he hated the mission, the Lord Commander was right. He had a choice. He decided he should die honorably, and that this time was bound to come eventually. He took the parchment and stood, Marco still on his arm, and covered his shoulders with a black cloak before exiting the office himself. 
Brian sat unseen on a wooded hillside, observing the caravan of Hassel Lumberdome, a jewelry merchant. The man was clearly proud of being one of the few remaining elves in the land, wearing traditional elfish garb and assuring all of his customers that the wares he sold were held to the same standard of the old kingdoms of his lineage. While Brian took in as much information as he could of the merchant and his ten guards, Marco was taking notice of something different entirely. Hassel had on his wagon, in addition to boxes of jewels and gold, several caged doves. They were bird of peace, wanting no harm to the life around them, and Marco's glowing red eyes settled upon the birds with wise contemplation. Marco had been a killer for his entire life, having never understood the concepts of love and kindness. His years were spent incinerating the foes of his master and watching as Lord Callum eviscerated his targets. Well, Marco, Brian whispered, we've dealt with worse, but this could be our last. Marco diverted his gaze from the doves on the wagon and into the eyes of his master. The bird, with horns unlike any other bird in the world, gave a slight nod. Marco felt bad for what was to become of his master, but knew his place at the assassin's side. The two waited until nightfall, the phoenix's eyes glowing dimly in the blackness of night. Two of the guards they observed had grown too drunk to fight, and the rest were tired from a day of traveling. They'd be only a day's travels away from the city, where Callum would be too recognizable to perform his duties. He needed needed to strike now, a dagger in the night, if he was to have any chance of success. Brian inched his way down the hillside and into the clearing where the merchant Hassel Lumberdome had set up camp. He would be unable to assassinate the merchant only. The guards would see him long before he got the chance. Brian let his arm down and Marco took flight overhead, waiting for his time to strike. As Brian approached, the alarm sounded, and even in his old age, he was able to dispatch two of the merchant's drunken guards before the rest even knew where he was. Marco took to the wagon, grabbing the boxes of doves in his talons and flying them to the hillside, freeing the innocent birds of their unjust captivity before returning for the merchant. As Marco flew back towards the caravan, he could see his master fighting valiantly against a swarm of armed protectors, their stances evidence of the formal training they received, and their shields showing no underestimation of their opponent's ability. Marco watched as Brian Callum, the deadliest assassin who ever lived, was struck for the first time ever by sharpened steel, a mere flesh wound, a cut through his arm, but nonetheless a sign of his mortality. By the time Marco had finished his short flight, it was too late. Brian was too close to the enemy combatants for Marco to be able to assist. His fire would scorch not only the men who wished to do his master harm, but Brian as well. A tinge of guilt engulfed Marco for having been selfish enough to rescue the doves before the man who'd saved his life. But but the guilt was clouded by a sense of justness. Marco was aware that Brian had accepted his defeat long before they'd perched on the hillside that day. His master had no wish to continue the thankless life of an assassin, and at least, Marco thought, something good could come of this glorious defeat. Still, though, Marco thought it unjust for such a historic fighter, such a deadly man, to be brought to his knees and executed by clearly unworthy foes. Marco held love in his heart for the man he'd spent his last fifty years with, and was sure to let the fire that ended the man's life be among the strongest he'd ever produced. It was a brilliant inferno, one which could be seen clear from their capital city. He knew Brian Callum felt no pain as his life came to a timely and bittersweet end. He would go down in history as an assassin who never let a target escape his clutches, including the merchant, and as a man who did right by more than a single bird. All right, guys, uh, so that was a bit of a shorter short story uh, than last week's, but I do hope you guys enjoyed. When I uploaded last week's short story, I felt kind of bad because, like, it wasn't appropriate for all audiences, and it was also, like, over a 20-minute video, so I thought that that might get a little bit hectic, but I do want to give credit where credit's due here. I have written down uh, Brian Callum, the name, uh, was come up with by that one Irish guy in stream, so thank you very much, that one Irish guy. Also, uh, the kind of basic plot uh, Brian Callum was widely respected due to the fact that every mission he was sent on was completed without a fault until Marco finds his one true love. That was come up with uh, by a loyal stream follower named TJTJ Tav, who's been there forever. So big shout out to TJTJ Tav. Thanks a lot, buddy, for that one. Um, red and black, the color scheme of the Phoenix painted on Commander Emmy's chest plate, and well is the last name Emmy, and the deer horns and also the vampire tapestry was all come up with by. 
by uh, dude underscore Emmy in the stream chat. So thank you very much, dude underscore Emmy. Uh, Harris2444, uh, obviously the last name Harris, the house Harris, the sigil Commander Emmy wore on his chest plate. Thank you very, very much uh, for your contribution, Harris2444. Actually, Nerdy wanted there to be an elf uh, somewhere in the short story, and Judy Dawn, a uh, fellow writer on Twitch, uh, came up with the name Hassel Lumber Dome for the merchant. So thank you all so much for your contributions. If you guys want to contribute to the next uh, short story that we're going to be writing live on stream, head on over to www.twitch.tv slash now. Click that follow button and you'll get an email notification whenever I go live. I really enjoyed writing this for you guys and I'd love to hear your feedback. My name is Timelake. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, I will see you all next time. See you guys. I always want to feel this way Oh yeah Just like a phoenix from the flame